Good evening. Uh, today is Wednesday, November 7th, 2012. I'm speaking with Dr. Riza Rizwanur Rahman. Dr. Rizwanur Rahman, uh, professor in Delhi. Uh, professor Rahman, um, what's your desh? Uh, I am from uh, Bihar and uh, from Sitamati district of Bihar and uh, India. And village? Uh, my village is a small village. Uh, it is around 40 kilometers away from Muzaffarpur. Muzaffarpur. And around 30 kilometers away from Sitamari. Sitamari. Okay. It's called Hirota. 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 So how did you, how, how large or how small, you mentioned small village. So tell me how many people uh, live there approximately? Uh, actually this is a very big village. Okay. And uh, it is in linear fashion okay. along the road. And, uh, and uh, it will be around, population should be around 2,500. 2,000. Yeah. Is it a mixed village or mostly Muslim village or no. Muslim Hindu mixed? Uh, surprisingly, it is mixed. Mixed? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, and can you tell, tell, how did you used to go to your village from the big city, Mazaparpur, Sitamari? How would you go? Okay, some uh, 20, 25 years back, uh, uh, we had uh, one motorable road mm. open round, round the year. Okay. Uh, but uh, later on, due to flood, mm. the there's no no road. Okay. Uh, because there are no bridges mm. bridges so on the road. Uh, we are actually destroyed. Okay. So uh, for ten or fifteen years, mm -hmm. there was no uh, round the year traffic. Okay. On those roads. So what did you do? So we used to travel around 15-20 uh, kilometers on foot mm -hmm. or on bicycle mm -hmm. to reach to the nearest bus stop. Okay. From bus stop uh, we used to get. So you bus. walk 20-20-15-20 kilometers. Yes, it was normal. It was normal those days. So how, how long would it take? Uh, it used to take around two three hours. Okay. Now did you uh, go to school in your village? Uh, yes, initially I started my schooling in, in the village. Okay. Uh, primary school. How many? Uh, okay, primary. Uh, primary school. From there I went to a middle school, which was just uh, I think two or uh, two two point five kilometers from away. And how did you go to school? Walking. Did, walking. Okay. Those days we used to walk. Okay. Then uh, I uh, I was sent to a school too far from my village. Mm -hmm. It is located in Champaran district. Okay. Uh, now it is under Dhaka subdivision okay. of Champaran district. Okay. You went to college there? I know. I, I went to a school. Okay, school. It was, it was high so school. Did you live in with so your relation I, or a boarding house? No, I lived in the hostel. Hostel. Okay. So I did my matriculation from that school in okay. 1985. Okay. And after that I came to Patna. Okay. For plus two. Okay. Uh, in those days, we used to have uh, college okay. for plus two education. Okay, yes, yes. So I did my plus two from Patna. Patna, and then you did so your. Then I came came to JNU. JNU for your doctorate. No, I came for five years integrated MA program in okay. Arabic language. Okay. And then I continued till PhD. Okay, did it from in in where you? No, no. So JNU. JNU. Okay. Yes. Now, <coughs> can you tell us a little bit about your house? How is it? It's a small house, big house. Tin roof, flat roof. What? Well, how do you describe your? Uh, okay. Mm, actually, uh, my ancestral house. Mm. Uh, it was a uh, mixed kind of house. Okay. It was uh, uh, one tiled mm -hmm. roof. Mm -hmm. Other one side. Mm -hmm. Another another side. It was uh, thatched. Mm -hmm. And we used to live together till the death of my father. Until 1992, mm -hmm. January. Then we separated. Uh, my uh, my father says in the Muslim uh, according to Sharia law, if your uh, grandfather is still alive and your father dies, mm -hmm. so you don't get any property, any mm -hmm. share from the property of your grandfather. But you, but so, 
But you are living in India, but, yeah. but why are they following Sharia law? It is a personal law. Uh, they are actually personal law is followed in two cases. Mm. One is uh, marriage and divorce. Mm. Another one is distribution of the property. Mm. And the rest of the cases, Sharia law uh, do not apply. Mm. So, mm, in my case, uh, so it is called Haq Majub. Mm. Once your uh, inheritance is finished, you can't get anything oh. from your grandfather. So, so you, your grandfather father inherited the property? Uh, yeah, grandfather was living. Okay. My father died, so I didn't get anything. Mm. So, but later on, uh, due to some pressure from society, from relations, mm. Uh, he agreed to give something. Okay. So we built a house mm -hmm. just next to the old house, mm -hmm. and uh, it is uh, this roof. Mm -hmm. The roof is not this RCC roof. Mm -hmm. It has tiles. Okay. This, uh, yeah. uh, one story, stone, two story. Stone, stone slabs. So one story house, okay. but very big house. Very big house. Um, with uh, a lot of a lot of veranda yeah. and uh, kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Toilet. There's a okay. toilet complex, not toilet. <laughs> now, let me ask, of course, yours is not a VR, was not partitioned, so it's not a partitioned issue. But let me ask you, since you mentioned your cousin, we are going to come to that quickly. Um, growing up as a Muslim in VR, how was easy or difficult for you? Was, was it any different from any others? Was it any... Any, I just, I'm curious. Yes. Actually, we never thought about this mm -hmm. because there's no difference between Hindu and Muslim. Oh, good. I mean, that's why. So, in the village, since um, economy is, was based on agriculture, mm -hmm. so everybody used to borrow everything from everyone. Muslim, so, Hindu. very mixed culture. Mixed very culture. Mixed. We never thought that uh, my neighbor was Hindu. Is it still there now? It's still India? there. It's still there. In, okay. So we never thought that somebody who was Hindu, uh, Dhobi, hmm. washerman, mm -hmm. uh, we used to call him uncle. Mm -hmm. uh, still we call him uncle. Mm -hmm. And we, we never thought that yeah. he, he was Hindu. Yeah. So, and his sons were my brothers. Mm -hmm. So we never felt about it. But then you mentioned, mentioned your your uncle or supposedly or since they they moved to Pakistan or when Pakistan came about. So do you know have you do you know why did they move? Is uh, your uncle moved or the cousin? No, no. no. Uh, my grandfather's uh, two brothers, mm -hmm. his two cousin brothers and his three sisters mm -hmm. and some other uh, yeah. relatives relatives. Yeah. They moved to Pakistan, the nearest part of Pakistan is East Pakistan. Oh, they went to East Pakistan. Yeah. They went to Dhaka. Dhaka. From Dhaka, they went to Chittagong and other places. They started their own business. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there were two reasons. It was not the partition. Uh, basically, they went to do their own business in Pakistan. They thought that. Uh, but because, 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 they, because of the mistake. partition, yeah. the partition didn't take place. Do you think they would have gone to East Bengal? Mm -hmm. Suppose East Bengal was part of India, but they would have stayed in. No, actually when uh, they were in Bihar, they used to have business in uh, Calcutta and mm -hmm. also Dhaka. Mm -hmm. So, when uh, India was partitioned... Bengal was partitioned. Bengal was partitioned. They thought that uh, Dhaka, uh, that part of... Uh, because the Muslim majority... Muslim majority, uh, they would be actually uh, uh, better mm -hmm. uh, in business prospects. Mm -hmm. So, they went to uh, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, East Pakistan. East Pakistan. Yeah. East Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, for in, and they they didn't go in 1947. Mm. They went later on. I think okay. 1962 or 63. Okay, so quite later. Yeah, quite later. So so, so they, by that time they have already seen yeah. uh, that that is Pakistan. They know, and they also know the Bihar. Yes. But they still decided to migrate there. No, and actually they wanted to migrate only after 60. Only uh, because uh, they wanted to see whether it will be uh, a safe place for business. business. Yeah. So actually, they had they already had their own business interests before. Okay. But they did migrate. Okay. They wanted to see the environment, okay. the environment. Okay. But there so, were many uh, two uncles and couple of aunts also migrated. Yeah, everyone, everybody Every moved. Okay. And they went to Dhaka, from Dhaka to Chittagong and other, other, other places. places. 
they established their own factories mm -hmm. and uh, some other kind what of kind of factory do you know what kind of business they used to have uh, one jute factory okay. one uh, person was in transportation mm -hmm. another uh, was doing something on dock okay. uh, yeah. i don't know do you, do you know their names uh, my uh, uh, or just uncle yes no i i know some names one uh, there's one uh, brother of my grandfather who is still alive mm -hmm. he lives in karachi his name was mustaqim mm -hmm. uh, hakim hakim mustaqim hakim and uh, husband of uh, my grandfather sister his name was mukim okay okay uh, now he's no more okay uh, then uh, now there's so okay. will be this no do i forget before i move on i forgot to ask you what's the name of your parents my father's name uh, is uh, mohammad kalibullah kalibullah uh, mother's name is hamda khatun okay what what kind of profession were they my father was a teacher in a teacher school in the school yeah. and mother uh, house of okay. yeah. now let's we get back to now <clears throat> so what happened to them in east pakistan and eh, because you mentioned now they are in karachi and elsewhere what how did this transition come about actually after uh, 71 not, not after 71 actually by uh, by the uh, by 1970 hmm. they felt that there was going to be some kind of problem mm. Uh, mm. in bangladesh so some of them they already shifted their business to karachi oh they some of them already some done them, yeah they had already done mm -hmm. so in 1971 there was some kind of problem in uh, in dhaka and other places so it, so they started migrating to uh, west bengal okay so before the actual uh, They, so uh, migrated to west bengal west bengal okay so the actual problem when they it is not they had already left the place okay they left everything so in 71 when the bangladesh war came yeah, yeah. all of these people were they, they, they came to india either either india or pak or no no they or, came to india okay and they came to the village okay and from there they they went to a refugee camp in uh, nepal no nepal had a refugee camp yes nepal had a refugee camp oh from nepal they were uh, then repatriated to uh, karachi oh i see so now all of them are in karachi the and, and they but you mentioned that there were some of them had already gone to karachi yes yeah, no Here. they had they had not gone they had shifted their uh, some uh, some business some business some so business. there was some link or some yes. footage there yes. some footprint there they had money in uh, banks banks okay they had some kind of shops or something so so they came to west bengal then to your village then then to nepal yes oh and from there they migrated they, they went to karachi okay so t now tell us about to what what you know about what they're doing in karachi how uh, is the life like uh, yes now there are 25 families hmm. and uh, there's one person who is into uh, uh business of furniture hmm. very hmm. big Uh, group mm -hmm. and they also have a big export house mm -hmm. for furniture mm -hmm. there's one person who went uh, from uh, dhaka to karachi mm -hmm. he didn't have money mm -hmm. so he bought some buffaloes mm -hmm. and he started selling uh, milk mm -hmm. now he he has the biggest dairy farm of sindh oh really he supplies milk to every city in sindh so very very successful yes in a short time to yeah. after 70 yes in i think in 10 years time he developed everything hmm? another another person uh, who didn't have anything so he started his scrap business buying his scraps and selling it in the market so somehow he managed to have seven person share in the seven factory so now he is doing very well hmm. he has his own cement factory mm -hmm. uh, another person uh, uh, who who had some money he bought uh, this three wheeler auto rickshaw mm -hmm. and now he has more than 2000 vehicles mm -hmm. mostly trucks and buses oh 
Yes. Another person who was not very good at business, so he started a shop. Hmm. So but now, that's a business too. Yes, a small, a small shop. Hmm. Now he has um, chains of shops in hmm. Karachi. Hmm. So there's only one person who was not good in business, hmm. so he joined a job in the government. Okay. Okay. Are they fine in Karachi? Do they feel like living in Bihar? And, and, and uh, what kind of, what, what is the situation now with them? No, no, uh, they think that uh, Bihar was a good place to live. Hmm. But L-I-V or L-E-A-V? <laughs> live, live, okay. L-I-V, live. Yeah. Good place to live, hmm. Bihar. Uh, because in those days there were not so many problems mm. and life was good mm. and agriculture was sufficient to mm. support the family. Uh, but it was not a good place for business. Okay. So Karachi is a good, good place for business mm -hmm. even today. They feel secured. Uh, but not secure. This is the problem. Mm. So. Uh, some of them, they want to migrate to some other country. Really? Even in yes. spite of the fact they are so successful? Yes, they are successful, but there are problems. Mm. Like there is one transporter who has some more than 2,000 trucks, trucks, trucks yeah. and buses. So he says that in a month actually they, he is losing 2-3 vehicles. 2-3 vehicles? Yes. That's a lot. People can barely have one, many uh -huh. people. But he is, he is supposed to be uh, a small transporter, not very big transporter. Because big, big transport companies are owned by Punjabis. Achha. And he is losing uh, these vehicles, not because of ethnic violence, mm. but also for due to rivalry Achha. with others. 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 They are just crippling them, yes. they are damaging it, destroying it. So, and there is no support from the government, mm. this is also one of the problems. So even security is a big concern, mm -hmm. they have their own private security guards, mm -hmm. uh, their houses are basically uh, guarded mm -hmm. around, the, uh, around the clock by security guards. Uh, arm, arm guards? Arm guards. Mm -hmm. So these are some problems. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So let me ask, what do you think, we are focusing on Bengal or others but right, because they went to Bengal. What do you think um, <clears throat> this partition of Bengal, um, was it, did anybody benefit? Or should I make it, did anybody benefit or did anybody lose or any, you know, was it? Uh, the partition of Bengal, in my opinion, uh, did not much, uh, did, it was not of much benefit. And to, uh, did, it, uh, did it benefit any group, any, any group, Hindus and Muslims, is Bengalis, West Bengalis, poor and rich, any, any, any thing? No, because in my opinion there were some concerned some, some concern politicians or yeah. rich people, or yeah. you can, we say elites. Yeah. Of, what about the partition of India as such? Was it? Good, bad, no comment, you know, it's yeah. just... Uh, if now, uh, now, uh, when we see the situation of Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, we see that uh, it was good. Mm -hmm. Because the all troubled areas of India went to, mostly to Pakistan. And uh, the whole Balochistan yeah. and yeah, yeah, North yeah, province. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but there is other aspect also. Some people just say that uh, if we had uh, those areas in part of India, uh, we could have uh, managed uh, better. Stabilized. Uh, stabilized, yeah. Like that. Better than Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let me uh, ask something. You know, you have gone to Bangladesh also, you have been to West Bengal. Have you ever thought why, for example, in, in West Bengal, which is a Hindu majority, but the Muslims are minority, but they stayed. But in Bangladesh, 
East Pakistan and Bangladesh where Muslims are majority, Hindus are minority, but they couldn't stay. Have you ever why why this contradiction? In the same Bengal, the same people. Uh, no, uh, this East and West Bangladesh, yeah. no, Bengal, yeah. the part, partition, partition was basically. Uh, there is one in one way, area, the minority was able to stay, but in the other world, wasn't. Uh, any, any, any? Have you ever thought? If you have not thought, you have not thought. No, I have not, not okay. thought much about this. Now, <clears throat> I'm almost to the end. Uh, do you think um, in the subcontinent, Hindus and Muslims can live together, or Muslims and non-Muslims, Hindus and non-Hindus, can live together peacefully? Why not? I don't know, I'm asking. No, we have, but been, at least we have been living for centuries. Sure, but of course 47 uh -huh. came and we didn't live. Yes. You know, that's why. Even today we have problems. Yeah. Uh, but still we are living together. Mm -hmm. There are some, some incidents. Yeah. yeah. Now, <clears throat> is there anything else that you'd like to add that I didn't ask you? I'm, I'm basically finished with the question. Is there anything that comes to your mind you want to add? Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to add to this, uh, this yeah. uh, coexistence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, if you see the Indian society, majority of people is secular. Mm -hmm. They want to live together. Uh, we never had problems in many areas which are supposed to be very Hindu kind of area. Similarly, we didn't have any problem in some areas which are supposed to be very good Muslim majority area. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like if you see the incidents of Malayana or mm -hmm. Gujarat or any other place. So mostly uh, problems were created by politicians and some interest groups from both the communities. Like there's one incident of Badayun, it happened long back. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was on the issue of uh, language. Mm -hmm. There was one uh, politician, Shirwani. Mm -hmm. There was another Hindu politician. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they wanted to actually uh, promote their own self. Their uh, own right, self. Right. So where was it? What, what region? What it was uh, in Badayu of UP. Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh, okay. uh, when this uh, Urdu language was uh, made second. Okay, what, which, second which language? Which, which, what time period? Uh, it was after nine, 90. 90. Okay. After 90. So Urdu was made a second official language mm -hmm. of UP. So one group came uh, uh, to the street opposing mm -hmm. uh, this uh, move. So Shirwani came with his group uh, in support of Urdu, mm -hmm. which was actually not necessary. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, there was clash and mm -hmm. riot started, and it went for several days. And several people were, uh, several people died, mm -hmm. and which was uh, actually this demonstration was of no use. Mm -hmm. If it was uh, there was no threat for Urdu, mm -hmm. similarly there was no threat for Hindi also. Mm -hmm. If you have an official language, you can also. Mm -hmm add another language and implementation of uh, Urdu as second official language cannot actually harm any other language. Mm. Okay, it is only just paperwork, you want to just appease a community and mm. you do it. And it is of uh, mm. no use for any mm. community or it is also not helping the language. But such kinds of incidents, it happened and it is creation of some politicians. Uh, for uh, their own purpose. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.